Welcome to the presentation. This presentation is given by Midas Tech International. In this presentation we will discuss optimizing mineral processing operations using machine learning algorithms. This presentation is a summary of new concepts inclusive of patented methods that are used by Midas Tech for analyzing mineral processing plant data to improve operational performance. Clearly in this title there are two main concepts. What do we mean by optimizing a plant and how do we use machine learning algorithms? This presentation presents these concepts simply and does not go into depth. More detailed explanations are available on other videos by Midas Tech. Mineral processing plants are complex systems. Despite hundreds of years of research, there are still many facets of mineral processing that provide technical challenges in order to truly optimize processing performance. Perhaps the easiest way to explain optimization is to consider the link between comminution or breakage and eventual separation. It's tempting to reduce the energy of, of comminution, but if we do so, then the mineral within the particles is not liberated, and if we recover the mineral, then a lot of the gain mineral is also recovered. So the grade of the mineral is too low, hence smelting costs will increase. It is also tempting to grind the particles as small as possible to increase liberation. But if we overgrind, then we have increased energy costs and processing can be rendered difficult due to the fineness of the ground products. Hence, we cannot optimize comminution by considering comminution in isolation. We need to consider downstream effects. Hence, we have to use a systems approach. Simulation is used to consider the mineral processing plant as a holistic system and identify the, opera the optimum operation of units to maximize profit. Typically, a plant that is optimized is 5% more efficient than a plant that is not optimized. In order to use the simulator, we need unit models as well as the ore properties. There are many strategies companies use to optimize plants and there's, here I've identified four approaches. One, rely on judgment. Don't use data, don't use quantitative methods. Use consultants. Two, totally rely on the accuracy of already defined models with it still without actually measuring plant data. Three, because of the weakness in available models, also rely heavily on lab results. The fourth method is to construct models from the plant data itself. These are called data-driven models and can also be called machine learning algorithms. And this is what we're discussing in this presentation. Within a mineral processing plant, strategies are generally presumed, not discussed. One only has to look at advertised positions to see this. Seldom does a position state that the applicant needs to identify the best optimization strategy. Instead, they are expected to work with an already defined strategy. The next slide shows the cost benefit of each strategy. This is necessarily interpretive. Total reliance on judgment is possibly the most common strategy and the least successful. It's expensive because it relies on highly paid consultants and staff. Yet with the absence of both data and simulation, it is of limited value. Sometimes simulation is used, but here I mean simulation without linkage to plant data. Even so, simulation does lead to process improvements. It, you're not really getting close to the optimum if you're not using the plant data to ensure the accuracy of the models. In order to improve simulation, costly lab tests may be applied. Again, this leads to further profit increases. Yet again, it is largely a workaround for the weaknesses in simulation. A data-driven model is not as expensive as one would expect. This is because it uses available data more efficiently than the other data-based methods particularly compared to the excessive reliance on lab tests. And the models from data-driven models are more accurate. To give you an idea of just how hard it is to use judgment, here we see a video of a flotation cell with the fluff being recovered. Now this particular video is provided by 
Himanshu Srivastav. Now, if you just look at it, what we see is slurry being recovered, but it really tells us nothing about just uh, how efficiently the process is performing. What we would like to do is to quantify how the process is performing. So we want to do that by using a mineralogical type data structure. Here we see a particle with valuable floatable mineral, which is green, non-valuable, which is red, and gain, which is yellow. So if we see the green particle, which here is valuable floatable mineral, or, and it's a liberated particle, it goes into the flotation cell, eventually will attach to a bubble and go to the con. However, the gain mineral will go into the flotation cell. It won't attach to a, a bubble and will eventually go to the tail. If we have a composite particle, then it has the valuable mineral and it may or may not go to the con or the tail, depending on the probability of attachment to a bubble. So some will go to the con and some will go to the tail. If we take a, a non-valuable floatable mineral, we don't want it to go to the con, but it will in fact attach to a bubble and go to the con. But if we had a ternary particle, uh, it's affected not by the content of just the green, but by the content of the green and the red. So it might go to the con or it might go to the tail, depending on its multi-mineral composition. The actual icon for flotation, in this case, shows the con going down the page. The icon itself is a little bit misleading because uh, down the page doesn't actually mean downward. The con does indeed float uh, and go upwards. Uh, this is actually a plan view of a flotation cell rather than an end view or side view. Machine learning can be thought of as an intelligent ext extension of mass balancing methods. If we knew exactly how particles are being separated at each unit, we can identify the unit models. We can also identify how those unit models change with operating conditions. This gives us the basis of a, of a very simple customized interface for users. The problem therefore is how to estimate the particle information. Well, it turns out that there are two ways of developing a mass balance system. The first way, what I call here, is conventional mass balancing and that's what most mineral processors learn. Mass balancing, and sometimes called multi-component mass balancing, is often used in mineral processing, and its primary purpose is to adjust the measured values so that there is mass balance consistency, and to use deductive inference to estimate missing values. For example, to estimate the solid flow rates if you know the percent solids. The second way is called information theory mass balancing. This isn't as commonly used. In this approach, we can extend mass balancing to use plausible inference to estimate missing values, but far more missing, missing values than from conventional mass balancing. In particular, we can infer the detailed ore properties, i.e. the distribution of multi-mineral particles, and how these particles are processed at each unit. Indeed, we are trying to use simple plant data measurements to infer detailed plant information. Uh, let me give an example of inference. Suppose we have a number of units that make up a complete plant and all we do is change the recovery of a particular mineral for one unit's products. We can now use mass balance techniques and estimate the new final product uh, grade and recovery. Now we may not be 100% correct in our estimate of the final grade and recovery but based on the concept of incremental improvement we will be correctly identifying whether there is profit opportunity. Once we estimate the new grade, we can then resample the plant. But the sampling does not have to be in detail, and we can use the differences between our simple estimates and the new plant data to refine our understanding of the unit models and all properties. The user of the system does not necessarily have to be exposed to the detailed information that is being inferred. From their viewpoint, it appears to be a simple mass balance. The main difference is of course the using information theory instead of conventional mass balancing. 
There are other names for inference, and these names are related to the domain in which they are used. Various names are information theory, probabilistic network, Bayesian network, soft sensors. Indeed, there is even a relationship between information theory and normal statistical methods, such as principal component analysis. In this presentation, we do not explain information theory or any of the other theories in depth, but such explanations are available in other presentations by Midas Tech. This century is sometimes called the mathematical age, and it is expected that mathematics will have far-reaching effects on many industries. Inference methods are actually some 100 years old, although they did gain popularity in the 1960s. The original methods of information theory can be sourced to Boltzmann in his theory of entropy and the connection with statistical mechanics. Mineral processing has largely been sheltered from these modern mathematical methods, mainly as a result of a lack of mathematical guidance. The emergence of the internet, which means that mineral processes can now more easily self-educate across disciplines, has opened up a broader understanding of how mathematics can be made useful. Furthermore, there's a wider use of advanced data analysis methods. Machine learning algorithms are now commonly used in many areas of engineering, business analysis and science. And it is inevitable there will be some permutation of knowledge to mineral processing from the other uh, disciplines. In, and furthermore, in mining, we're getting increased automation methods, led mainly by robotics in the mining industry. Companies are increasingly looking for methods of allowing remote analysis of the data. All these influences have led to a natural movement to these modern mathematical methods. Once we can estimate how particles are being processed, we have an instantaneous snapshot of the unit process. That is, we can identify, as in the animation, how particles are being processed at units. By considering how these snapshots change for different, different operating conditions, we can construct models directly from the data. This is the core of the machine learning algorithms. This gives an example. Here we've actually changed the, uh, the bubble air rate, and so the red indicates um, the original recovery curve as a function of composition, but by increasing the airflow rate, we've got the green uh, recovery curve. Now, clearly, anywhere in between, the, the uh, recovery curve will be somewhere between. Machine learning algorithms estimate what the intermediary um, curves will look like and indeed can be used for extrapolation to go beyond what we might have calibrated the models with. So machine learning uh, allows us to uh, construct the models directly from the data. To give you an idea about the conventional ways of fitting models, um, when it comes to developing a model, we might say that it should be a PhD project. I was at uh, JKMRC for a number of years, and I advise many students. If you actually look at a PhD, they may just focus on developing one model for just one unit, and it could take on average four and a half years. In most instances, the models are not practical. Here's a quote, only 10% of PhDs provide significant original contribution. Detailed engineering plant surveys are expensive and may be performed only once in a plant's lifetime, if at all. I can name many plants where there has been no survey whatsoever. The approach recommended here requires less measurements, hence it makes it practical. However, the measurements should be made more often. This is because machine learning is also related to the concepts of continuous improvement. There are many advantages of using machine learning algorithms. They're fast. They make maximum use of available plant data and may not require detailed plant surveys. Of course, there's a profit benefit. Reduced laboratory work, reduced analysis time, linked to online instrumentation, and they're accurate and they actually reflect the real process. Machine learning algorithms are customized for mineral processing. 
their mineral processor friendly. Machine learning algorithms use understandable patented methods and we provide courses to explain these methods. They're really quite obvious if you sit down and do the course. These courses have already been delivered to many plant operators, plant managers, consultants, researchers and lecturers. The mineral processing plant is con considered as a system of units so that unit models are identified. Results are presented to engineers in a comprehensible manner. I users use straightforward Excel and Visio tables and flow sheets. This allows empowerment of the mineral processors and other key staff to understand exactly what's happening in the plant. The software will also present results to high level decision makers. The following slides are a summary of the MIDAS method and how it relates to current practice. Current engineering methods use mathematics but they are not tapping into all the useful methods that are available. There are mathematical approaches available, but they are often black box and haven't fully captured the engineering process. Midas Tech is a more balanced approach where we use and integrate mineral processing knowledge and mathematical methods. Midas Tech has both a strong understanding of mineral processing and applicable mathematics and is well placed to take a lead role in mineral processing, plant data analysis and simulation. How do we move forward? Well there's a number of options. You could arrange for a course on advanced simulation or you could start with the simplest product we've developed which is a 1D mass balance system. Alternatively you can send us plant data for trial or if you're confident, you can arrange a total solution, install all our available software and implement it as soon as possible with a view to increasing the uh, profit of your plant as soon as possible. Uh, with one company, uh, we looked at the cost benefit and the number of days they would have to use our software to um, compensate for the cost would be three days. So it has a three day cost only. Um, if you want more information, please contact me on my email and there's also a YouTube channel.